is at a crossroads. We are standing before a choice. If you look back in the history of civilization, right? Uh, yeah, the Romans, the Incas, the Mayans, the Aztecs, they all got to very sophisticated models, and then they hit a boundary condition and they suddenly collapsed. We've gotten that same level of sophistication. You talk to the Nile Fergusons or the Yuval Hararis, all the conditions that led to the collapse of the Roman Empire, the collapse of the Incas, are all there now. We have to navigate it more elegantly so that we don't end up in 300 years of the Dark Ages. And that's the work of, I think, this generation. I think this next 20, 30 years will dictate the next 300 years of humanity. What kind of a future will we choose for generations to come? This idea of mass vaccination and, you know, passports, digital passports that relate to it, they're, they're sort of a double-edged sword. So I'd like to envision the future as the bright side of it and as the, the part where autonomy and, you know, blockchain and AI help to increase uh, human spirit and awareness and also to provide more productivity so that we have more time to live. Uh, basically, you know, have them, the computers help us to, to create a faster and better system for ourselves, but not inhibit progress. Will we opt for a future of centralized control? The decentralized world is definitely coming. And there is, of course, a blowback where where the centralized governments are going, wait, 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 we don't want, you know, we don't want to lose our power or whatever. But, but I think everybody's better off with a decentralized government because everybody's better off with an open, free flow of goods and services and finances. Or a future of pure creative energy, community, and decentralization. Two to three trillion dollars of wealth has been created mostly over the last five years. And that wealth has ended up in the hands of people all over the world. Normally, this kind of wealth took generations to accumulate. If ever there was a moment we needed this kind of wealth distributed all over the world, something magical is happening here at a moment in time that we need it. The Future Is Now presents Together with OpenXO, One Inch Network, Global Digital Club, Bonus Market, and Global Autonomous Network, AIBC Summit UAE 2021, Transforming the Future. Welcome to the city of tomorrow. This is Dubai. How will we transform the future? Is DeFi the answer? Euro on my bank is just a number in database. Something can go also wrong. Someone of the employees of the bank can just remove this data and I, I wouldn't have any penny more on, on, on the account. Sooner or later, uh, I guess, also the uh, banks, the central banks would move the direction of blockchain because you, you, you get the proof that nothing was manipulated for. Who will guide us to the right path? The mothership of Bitcoin or the altcoins? The person debating me that their token is better, that person is lost. I'm not there to save that person. <laughs> I'm there to save the newbie trying to understand where their money can be safe in this crazy world of pump and dumps. The market is now completely changed. From 2017 to now, we have a really economic system. We have a really ecosystems that works. It is the city of the future taking a tangible stand into abundance and allowing decentralization to flourish. Right now, we are looking towards the next innovations in, in the blockchain space. Uh, things like NFTs, uh, things like uh, decentralized finance, and even centralized finance based on blockchain technology is topics that we're exploring here. We have a plan in cooperation with the Blockchain Center to create a UAE crypto map, where we will map and list every single crypto company in this country 
and have a kind of barometer which says that this company is verified, registered, not registered, scam, it's haram, it's halal, like all those things. With autonomy and innovation, Dubai is on its way to become self-sustainable and fully regenerative. And it's happening all over the world. In our network, there, there are lands, there are landowners, they're everywhere and they're realizing that it is up to them to feed their local communities. And here in the desert, it is more important than ever. Dubai is doing a good job recognizing the change and adapting to it. Look at Florida and Miami. They're doing a, a good job and you can see they're capitalizing. They're the beneficiary of the change. That's what happens when you embrace the future. You get to be part of it. You get to have a say in it. Resist it, you know, it, it runs you over. Keeps you coming. <laughs> Created by One Day Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, my decentralized futurist, Miguel Francis Santiago, we're back. The Future is Now Media Group is again with Iman Poulos at AIBC Summit UAE 2021. Today is the day of the blood moon where you let go of everything that doesn't serve you and you only take in what does as we move into a new world after the Great Reset and we will make sure that it's just all-encompassing, bright, renewable and beyond because we will make our technologies good. Welcome to the future is now. AIBC headlines Dubai with droves of decentralized nomads from all over the world congregating together to decide what the future of disruption will be. World-renowned thought leaders from top Silicon Valley venture capitalists like Tim Draper to the chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation and even a former running candidate for the presidency of the United States, Brock Pierce, were just some of the many esteemed guests present at this conference, headed by Sigma Group and Iman Poulos. It took us 18 months of sweat, blood and tears, but not only did we not reduce our staff at my company, at my event company, we doubled in workforce and only because of that, but by remaining nimble, we've managed to turn this around in Dubai in six weeks and we had a lot of people coming to the show. Dubai is an extremely friendly place to do business. Uh, I was welcomed with arms wide open by the government. Not only did they sanction the show, but they also sponsored, they put money on the show. And they told me, Eman, we'd love to see you again next year. Let's make sure this remains a yearly event. Dubai has taken the seat as the number one destination for futurists in this post-COVID world. Thanks to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum's vision for the future, with an initiative which launched in 2018 and put the whole city onto the blockchain technology. We meet with the CEO of Dubai Blockchain Center, appointed by Sheikh Mohammed, Dr. Marwan Al Zarouni, to dive deeper into what's in the agenda. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's vision, I think, is broad and, and noble and, and truly supportive of the young innovators where the government is creating amazing incentives that are completely precedential as far as nation building to really invest into the young, to really give the, this playground water to prosper and, and blossom. There were a lot of cases that were flourished into actual sustainable cases and, and some of the exercises that we've done we noticed some of the weaknesses and some of the use cases so not every use case that was proposed in 2016 became a project. Uh, Dubai also has its own council on blockchain located here in Dubai within a number of councils around entrepreneurship, around other aspects of life within Dubai that will make Dubai and is actually working towards making Dubai the best city in the world when it comes to happiness and other initiatives to create this kind of environment and ecosystem in Dubai that's not only focused on one area which is blockchain but focus on innovation, on creating ecosystems within the market for things like science, uh, biotechnology, uh, space uh, science and other aspects of science that we can't even, we can't even imagine right now. 
people don't have to like hide their money or hide their things or hide themselves from people because they are so rich maybe in Europe or some UK or some other place which might be slightly more criminal and be scared that somebody attacks them or robs them or anything because Dubai is so safe so that's why many many entrepreneurs and people of the future choose this destination because they are safe and they can be rich and legally rich you would call this back in the day the American dream so this is like kind of the new American dream but it's not American Dubai is a safe harbor for innovation. Futurists like Matthias Mende have been accumulating in Dubai for some time. Matthias moved here in 2018 and two years later he began his brainchild project, the development of Bono's Market, a revolutionary ecosystem for creators, celebrities, brands and other people of fame to engage with fans like never before. Private channels, NFTs, merch, metaverse and more tools to create a unique experience for fans, followers and influencers, leveraging blockchain and tokenization. If you know crypto well, there's a similar project which called Chilis, which is soccer fan tokens. So it's a little bit similar, but what we do is we tokenize celebrities. Celebrities of choice, which we choose, which we know and we create a very special user experience for the celebrity token holders, for the fans. Now, how does that work? Explain it. Give us a use case example. I'll give you a use so case. For example, I, I love Till Lindemann of yes. Rammstein. Yes. What can you offer me? Well, and, Tim, and him. Okay, sure. Tim Lindemann of Rammstein, he's a legend, not just in Germany, but around the world. Let's say that Tim Lindemann has 50 million fans. Let's say 200,000 of these fans are hardcore fans. Now, as bonus market, we create 200,000 celebrity tokens. And what the fan can do with this token? The fan can now access a special private Telegram channel. And this token, it's like an access key. And the celebrity will drop a piece of unique content every week. The celebrity is mandatory, must do this. That's what they sign up for. And then the fan gets every week the content which he will see nowhere else, on no other social media, on no other platform. So in the case of this amazing singer, this legend, he would wake up one day and say, oh, good morning, guys. I was sleeping and I had this dream and this dream was about a song and just tell me how you think this song is and then I will sing now one phrase out of it and then he sings and then once he sings now since it's on telegram the super fans the celebrity talk holders they can vote one to ten if it's actually amazing or not so basically his super fans who mostly care for the celebrity have a very high chance to interact with them so they are his fans but also kind of not employees but they add value to the celebrity so it's not just the fan winning the celebrity too my dad fought in in the korean war and after the war they drew a line it was called the demilitarized zone between north and south korea and on the north side, they used uh, Marxist-Leninist philosophy, where government control and uh, the government tells you what to do and everybody follows whatever the government says and, and they operate that way. And then South Korea was free and open society. It was a democracy, free markets, um, a, a world where people could say whatever they wanted. And now we're 70 years later, we're three or four generations later, and the average South Korean now makes 430 times what the average North Korean makes in a year, and that's when you adjust for purchasing power. And the average South Korean is four inches taller than the average North Korean. It's pretty clear to me which system works better. A free system works a lot better than the government control system. So governments out there, free your people, allow people to be free, allow them to go explore, and innovate and try new things 
and don't overregulate them and don't tell them all what they have to do here and here and here. Let them fly. Let free flag fly and you will have a wealthy, free, exciting, happy environment. Tim Draper couldn't join the summit physically, but as per usual, Tim always appears at AIBC virtually. We had the opportunity to catch him after the summit at his base in Hero City, California. Another innovator from the land of the free and former CEO of Singularity University, Salim Ismail, made it to the summit in Dubai, currently heading Open Exo, an exponential ecosystem that empowers people and industries to transform the world for a better future. Having completed exponential pilots with Procter & Gamble, Gucci and KPMG, and a community of over 8,000 users and consultants exchanging services literally all over the globe, OpenXO brings excitement and experience to the industry of decentralization. What are we in for here? What's the future of decentralization? So I think it's inexorable and inevitable because we've run the world on a centralized model for the last few hundred years. And those, those centralized models are really good for managing scarcity. The corporation, top-down hierarchical structure, Judeo-Christian religions, the military-industrial complex, uh, centralized network environments like wall gardens of Facebook, Amazon, etc. are great for managing that. Technology is delivering us abundance. Solar energy will be abundant in the next few years. We'll be able to have everything powered by solar. That will make water abundant. Healthcare, education are becoming abundant, etc. And in a world of abundance, you need to decentralize. Um, and the internet is powerful because of that. We have now a whole rise of a whole set of movements that are about decentralization. Burning Man, the maker movement, DAOs, decentralized cryptocurrencies, all moving towards decentralized models for navigating the world. And so therefore, it's an inexorable trend. The centralized world does not like this, naturally, and so they fight it tooth and nail, but it's unstoppable. And the only question is, how seamlessly will we make that transition? How do you feel Dubai can play a role in helping create more decentralized regulation for this space in the future. As with any new technology, regulation is always lagging a little bit behind, but I think uh, in the UAE and, uh, and a lot of these uh, techno regions, they are experimenting much more and they're much more open to risk and innovation than other regions in the world that are more conservative when it comes to regulations. So it is really a matter of not how you regulate, but which partners you pick that can actually help you make this space more, more you know, uh, friendly for both the investors and businesses, but also safe for the actual regular person. Regulators around the world are burdening companies at their own peril. I think if they're over-regulating, they're creating an environment that's less free uh, and, you know, the U.S. is built on freedom. And if they overregulate, then they squelch all of the innovation that's happening in their country so that that country loses out. So you basically need a, a light touch and allow the proliferation of new technologies and new innovations. And a lot of that is, is on the edge. And uh, the regulators have to kind of go, okay, we're going to let this happen for a while because we want to see how great this technology is and what it can do for all of us. But it's great in the Middle East where you are, the world's starting to free up. People are starting to open up and, uh, and you're starting to see a free market. And I think it's fantastic. And I know Dubai has led the charge there and so... Uh, good on you for being out there and, and uh, helping encourage this charge of freedom and trust throughout all of the Middle East. Now tell us more about OpenXO and how that became a reality. We've generated billions of dollars of economic value and we've tokenized it so that it scales. Right? So by tokenizing, it decentralizes, by decentralizes, it scales. Because this has to scale to a global level 
for us to navigate this transition seamlessly. Uh, and what's really maybe the most unique is almost every other token in the world um, has built a token and they're looking for use cases. And we honestly by accident have gone the other way. We've built the ecosystem, we've built the capability, we've been delivering value globally, and we're tokenizing so that it scales. I've been fortunate enough to be at the intersection of cutting edge new technologies from building Singularity University and then writing the book on, on how do you navigate and organize for this new world? How do you organize for abundance? How do you build a company that can scale as fast as technology can scale? And we built a community and ecosystem and tool set around that. The key problem that we've solved is, I call it the immune system problem. You try anything disruptive in a legacy environment and the antibodies attack you. And this is why big companies globally can't innovate because the antibodies stop a Ford from launching Uber or a stop Marriott from launching a, a, an Airbnb. They just can't do it. Same way the car industry cannot produce a Tesla. They'll do it in response, but never uh, proactively. We came across Nectone, which is a brain bank that has, uh, in the last few months, cracked a fundamental problem, which is how do you preserve the brain after death? And they've, they've, they've proven that they can uh, trap and save all key information in a brain uh, once you die. Therefore, we can resurrect it later. Okay? Now this. Uh, one technological breakthrough has unbelievable implications for religion, ethics, income disparity, um, uh, choice about who should get it, uh, should we do something like this, etc. And the partnership is we're using our Exos tokens to sponsor the, the preservation of five uh, people on death. And the question now becomes forced as to which five and how will we choose and who gets to decide and, and how do we find those, the, the appropriate folks, right? Um, and, and is it appropriate to do that or not? And let's have that discussion because that conversation needs to be happened. You know, there's always been two fundamental truths in the world, uh, death and taxes. Um, crypto and UBI uh, solve taxes and we may just have solved death. The peak of exponential technology may just be perhaps what OpenXO and its co-founder Salim Ismail reveal at AIBC with Nectome's Brain Preservation Partnership. However, with countries like El Salvador adopting Bitcoin as its legal tender, the rise of the metaverses, NFTs and the continuing astronomical pumps in the world of DeFi, what will be the guiding stone for the future of our industry? We meet with Crystal Rose Pierce of SenseChat and her husband Brock Pierce of the Bitcoin Foundation to get their outlook on the crossroads that disruptive innovation is currently standing on. Brock having ran for President of the United States in 2020 and a plethora of women in tech entrepreneur initiatives that Crystal is involved in make this couple a clear testament to what it takes to create positive change within the system. We're breaking the borders, we're breaking the boundaries right now. Um, decentralization has always been our sort of utopian goal, uh, but I think that we're learning how to work within a centralized world. And over the last 10 years, we've been creating this groundswell of a movement that now, uh, today, you know, we're talking to world leaders and we're, we're integrating in. So to me, the future is still a bridge. Um, we're not replacing the old with the new, we're creating a bridge between the two things. And I think that's the, the most delicate part of it, is how do you combine everyone together and how do you create a system that works symbiotically. It's both exciting and it's scary at the same time. I feel like the technology that we have is enabling us to do things faster, do things smarter. Um, we're able to you know, have more ownership of ourselves and our works. But at the same time, this idea of mass vaccination and you know passports, digital passports that relate to it, they're, they're sort of a double-edged sword. So I'd like to envision the future as the bright side of it and as the, the part where autonomy and you know, blockchain and AI help to increase uh, human spirit and awareness and also to provide more productivity so that we have more time to live. Uh, basically, you know, have the, the computers help us to, to create a faster and better system for ourselves, but not inhibit progress. I want to ask you this publicly now, are you going to run for the President of the United States in 2024? For legal reasons, I cannot confirm or deny what I'm going to do next. But I will say that 
Very few people are willing to run for, call it the highest office. And there's a reason why. By doing that, you are inviting in a level of scrutiny, a magnifying glass to take a look at every decision you've ever made in your life. It can cost you your life, your liberty, your reputation, everything you have. Why would I subject myself to such a thing if I wasn't committed to following all the way through to serve humanity in whatever way I can? Let's say this was an exploratory mission to understand the mechanics of the system. You have to go into the belly of the beast and to learn how to run a national campaign without any of the existing infrastructure that enables politicians to run for office, without any of the funding mechanisms that do allow politicians to run for office, without the political platform that you know is the script you use when you run for political office, and to do that in the midst of COVID. My basic training is complete. Brock has been an integral part of the Bitcoin adoption around the world, co-founding Tether, EOS, and being a part of many other leading digital currencies in the industry, with his latest involvement in Space Fund and the new space movement, make this man an ideal leader for the future that we are seeking. Our roles, long term, are determined by how well we perform. Systems are going to change and they're going to evolve. You can't stop change. Change is a constant. All you can do is adapt to it. And the question is, as the winds or the waves of change come in, you catch that and ride it, or do you miss it <laughs> and get pummeled by it? That's all we can do, and that's what we're seeing with nations. You know, we're living through the fourth industrial revolution, and we're going to see some major changes. I don't view my money as mine. I may be in possession of it, but I can't take it with me. I'm a steward or custodian of it. Money I view as a form of stored energy that also wishes to flow. It's a current, see. And my job is to be a good conductor of that energy. The flow of the new internet of money has been revolutionized by DeFi, or what is known to be decentralized finance, a part of the coming Web 3.0. And there is one company that had phenomenal success in 2021. Meet One Inch Network and its co-founder, Sergey Kuntz. The DeFi platform, which reached a whopping $120 billion in transaction volume since its inception in 2019. All the while, One Inch is solving one of the biggest issues for mass adoption, which is high entry point and barriers to use cryptocurrencies. I remember my, my first time using MetaMask. Yeah? I didn't understand anything. What, what is that? What's, what's happening here? I said having a wallet. What I can do with that? Why I should send a transaction? But we have already this DeFi, decentralized finances. Yeah? They are not regulated because you can't regulate smart contract. This is a very important thing. And I see banks like a gatekeeper. So um, they have these uh, retail users, uh, normal people who like just trust the bank. And they can play the role as a gatekeeper. They can collect all the normal people who are using centralized services like a bank. And they can offer DeFi services. So uh, One Inch is working with uh, Switzerland Bank, Zignome Bank. It's a, it's a new kind of bank. They're, they're quite open, they're regulated, and they're quite open to work also with DeFi. The One Inch Network is taking the industry by storm thanks to its DeFi protocols that facilitate cost-efficient and secure transactions. Serving as a single entry point to DeFi for all kinds of users, the One Inch DApp is the number one DeFi aggregator that offers access to the deepest liquidity and the best token swap rates on various DEXs using its multi-chain protocols. For example, you have uh, 10 millions of dollars in ETH, yeah, and you you think that the next uh, dump comes, 
and you would like to sell these 10 millions of ETH in one single transaction in a decent manner, not trusting anyone except yourself and your wallet which you are using. And you can do it by using OneInch, because OneInch uh, have unique uh, algorithm which uh, finds uh, routes uh, among different markets to make this uh, trade possible. For example, we could maybe swap Ethereum to WBTC, to USDC, and then to DAI. Uh, we could, in the same transaction, use also different other markets uh, by avoiding high price slippage and uh, providing the best rate on the market. It is kind of chain of swaps in one single transaction. And it's uh, mathematically proven that you get the best uh, rate in the market. Actually, we are Google uh, in, this, in defining this price points. Like the Google or one of the many Googles or the few Googles? We are, we are better than Google. <laughs> I, my, my name is also Sergey, <laughs> by the way. <laughs>With the coming of the DAOs, the blockchain entrepreneurs were able to create a completely unique way of doing business in the future. And they are starting to do so now. Ilya Churikov of Global Digital Club, a decentralized autonomous ecosystem with values created from the realization that there are two ways for this digital world of the future to develop. Either a full technocratic data mine and controlled grid box or a free, decentralized and eco-technological environment where the many stand in control while concepts of the few at the top are eliminated by a value self-generating equilibrium. 
global digital platform also functions as a digital school for people completely unacquainted with digital currencies, DeFi, and all the new tools of decentralized value creation to have an opportunity at educating themselves into this new system. We have already a digital bank, fully like uh, work operational in 180 countries, more than 200,000 clients already in. Uh, we have already a marketplace with the goods, with the services uh, that's not only a virtual one, but physical products. Because we are building autonomous economic space where a person can uh, make money and can spend in one place. So we make this turnover money in a, one ecosystem. And uh, mostly what important, like we started to build our uh, like Dow land, Eco Technopolis. So we bought a land uh, next to sea, actually a very beautiful place. And we started to build a future of the like future village for people who wants to grow up, who wants to grow up in a such kind of community, who wants that their children will grow up in the right space. Uh, so this is like what we're doing right now. There are solutions in AI and solutions in blockchain and solutions in agriculture are key for our innovation in space. If we're going to settle the moon, if we're going to settle Mars, we need to incorporate and we must connect. And the same goes for blockchain. So it, to me, it's bringing all these segregated worlds together and allowing people, giving them a space to connect. But again, it's not all about my land. And that's what Global Autonomous Network is. We empower people all over the world who have their hands on the ground, who own the land, to say, bring something special. When we at Ara, we wear cowboy and cowgirl hats. We go for a walks, we see cows, we see turkeys. While we're speaking business, while we're connecting on personal level, but then there are different properties. For example, in Puerto Rico, Loop Land is a beautiful land. There is something different in Puerto Rico. And discussions, while they are the same, our experience and connecting with the land is so different. And that goes for Panama, that goes for Ukraine, that goes for Dubai. Every single piece of land has something special. And when we are there, we can have that experience of integrating and incorporating. And the fact that it's autonomous is very important because we need to be able to truly and freely travel and experience the world, not just in conference rooms, but connecting with the earth, experiencing the tapestry, the magic of every specific property. Irina Litchfield, a partner at Percival, the founder of ARA Global Texas, which became the first autonomous hub at the Global Autonomous Network, a united network of futurists in the world of innovation, bringing together disruptive entrepreneurs that are keen on creating a new model of living through topsoil autonomous lands, agrotech and regenerative farming, blockchain, new space and beyond. Dubai being supportive of innovation and being itself a world-renowned showcase of what autonomy can achieve in the middle of the desert became the next frontier for the Global Autonomous Network. Now, it is a long-term investment. It will take about five years in order to be able to truly bring the soil to truly grow. But all the good things, they come in time. And it is clear that they are open to these opportunities. Me and my husband, we really got inspired to take a real active step. And we believe that real active step it starts with buying the land. And so we bought a land in Texas. It's unrestricted land in an unincorporated city. And we decided that if we can do it on a small scale, we only have 100 acres of land, we can actually learn and implemented ourselves and so that's what we've been doing we have cows we have chickens we're growing hemp with license and most importantly we also incorporating new tools we're spraying microbiomes we're making sure that we're seeding our fields are seeded with 52 different crops and those fields they feed our cows so our cows are truly getting the best nutrition they can and therefore their bodies are healthy. So when they produce, they produce something in return. 
Dubai has always been and I've always been also very forward looking within the blockchain center as well as supporting all the startups, whether they are locally or internationally when it comes to any new emerging you know, areas of innovation within the blockchain ecosystem. Even one of the leading Bitcoin maximalists in the industry, Tone Vays, who believes there should be nothing but Bitcoin in the world of decentralization, has been quite taken by Dubai and has become an avid visitor to the city of the future. One of the things that makes Dubai incredible is that they don't uh, see money as a problem for people. And it built this. It's a tax-free utopia for people. They just want people to come and build stuff. Their currency is pegged to the US dollar. They did not print their own money. They do not manipulate the currency. And they really focus on innovation and financial freedom. And I think this place is only getting started. Blockchain gives us ability to have immutable information. It is the single source of truth. It is so unique and special to us. And we're just at the beginning of what that means. We still are figuring out about it. And the truth is, is that what I believe happened in the last year is that people are realizing that they're living in a now moment. This is now. There's no future. Future never comes. The future is now. Let's take this moment to think deep in how the fork in the road can transform to become a highway to unity, freedom, integrity, and peace on our planet. It is time for the preservation and enlightenment of the human race, where distributed technology and disruption lead the way in not altering our humanity, but enabling our species to explore space, create health, wealth, and abundance for our planet and our children, and do what we were meant to do, explore the never-ending frontier, the only constant that is truly our future. This transformation begins here in Dubai, the city of tomorrow. I hope for everyone to find your individual superpower, harness it, leverage it, and use innovative technology to better humanity. Don't trust anyone, verify all your own keys, and stay healthy and stay safe. Take a deep look inside yourself, find your massive transformative purpose, what would get you, what problem do you want to solve by the end of your lifetime? And then we have the tools and ecosystem and the technologies are certainly there to help you fulfill that. And today we have a magical capability for anybody to fulfill their own potential and their full potential and I wish that upon you. I would like to tell you that it's time to unite. The whole world is watching on us right now and only we can show such kind of example how we can make a new community in uh, this crazy time because everything is in our own hands. I wish for trust and freedom throughout the entire world. Complete trust and complete freedom. And Bitcoin is really where we're gonna get it. Crypto is its own world. And people have new opportunities to make money to send money, to help with money, to create things, to build things. And it's just something amazing. Educate yourself very well. Learn as much as possible. See people who have a good reputation in the market. If they have podcasts, listen to them. You owe it to yourself to first try blockchain technology, get a wallet, invest in, in a little bit of Bitcoin, whatever you can afford to lose, you know? And the second thing is you owe it to yourself to come to Dubai and see the innovation here. You owe it to yourself to experience Dubai firsthand. I wish people would consider Bitcoin as a decentralized form of global money. We invite you to join us at the next AIBC Summit Dubai, which will be held in March 2022. 
My name is Miguel Francis Santiago, and this is the story of the future that we have been documenting for the past five years. The future is now film, the first documentary film series on disruption that Bitcoin has created on our planet. Join our DAO at thefutureisnow.community and be a part of the change. You can't change the past, but you can change what's to come. We live in an era where blockchain, AI, big data, quantum computing are all in their embryonic stage and they're growing, they're growing. And if I, as an events guy, could contribute to this space to make the world a better place, so can you play an important role to make this a better world as well. Embrace your reality to understand that everything is good and understand that there are people that are driven by creating reality for themselves and for you. And so I want to encourage you to take an active step and look in your life and say, what can I do? And don't pay attention to negativity. Don't pay attention to bad news. We are driven to help you. The single source of truth is exclusively unique and it will save us and it will provide benefits for you. For all of you tuning in to realize how special you are and to love yourself, to forgive yourself, to have compassion for others as they learn and remember that there's always a path to redemption and a continual opportunity to serve. We have an opportunity to build a better world together. Teamwork makes this collective dream work. So let's dream impossible things in service. Don't miss the future. The future is now.